Hey there, I'm Gary Sims and welcome to this week's AI Roundup. Now, of course, one of the big topics we're going to be covering is all that's been going on over at OpenAI. But before we go into the details of that, I really would like to thank OpenAI and Sam Altman for all the entertainment they've given us over the last few days as we've been following all the things that have been going on. Been great for YouTube creators, for journalists, for bloggers all over the world. So thanks for that, guys. That has been really useful. Now, of course, more seriously, if you've been away on some tropical island and you haven't been following what's been going on, just let me quickly catch you up to speed. OpenAI is the company that brought us ChatGPT. And uh, a few days ago, the CEO and one of the co-founders, Sam Altman, was kicked out of the company. The board met and decided that he should go. Now, before we go any further, you should know that the board of OpenAI is not like the board of a normal profit company. OpenAI is actually set up as a non-profit company. It's set up because it wants to be able to better humanity with artificial intelligence tools and therefore profit isn't its first goal. And there are some things built into its structure that talk about AI safety, responsibility and so on. So when the board make a decision, they're not making it on the basis of, well, we didn't get enough money, we're not making enough profit. They actually do it on a different basis. And that's important when we come to discuss what's happened. So what did happen is after Sam met with the board, they said, off you go. They showed him the door and kicked him out. In fact, he posted a picture showing he was wearing a guest a pass because he was no longer allowed to be in the building. He had to go in there to sign in with security and have a guest pass so that he could get in. Now, Microsoft then stepped in and said, well, Sam, if you're looking for a job, why don't you come over and join us? And he brought with him some other key people. And so Microsoft kind of announced Sam is now working for us. Microsoft has invested billions in open AI, bringing ChatGPT uh, to uh, Bing and to Windows. So it wanted to protect that investment. And then later on, the CEO of Microsoft was giving some interviews and he wasn't actually quite so sure whether Sam was joining because in the background, there was still movements going on, still plans going on to bring Sam back into OpenAI. And that's eventually what happened. And this happened in parallel with lots and lots of the employees saying that if Sam wasn't brought back, they were going to resign. So, you know, 80%, even 90% of the staff were going to walk unless Sam was brought back, which would basically mean the end of open AI because you can't run such a huge company on a skeleton staff. And so what happened in the end was that Sam came back, uh, the board was changed, that old board uh, eventually got shown the door and things are back to normal. Now, there are two really, really, really important things about this. The first is if this was just some kind of classic boardroom battle, for power, a political thing, then it was entertaining. We've seen it happen before. There'll be a movie about it that will get released on HBO or Netflix or something, and it will be quite interesting. However, that's it. Door closed, the power struggle happened, the board got changed, Sam became the victor. Now, if that's it is, then it was just a power struggle. However, remember what I said, that the board's interest in this particular case was not the money they were getting. In fact, most of them, all of them, I think, had successful careers in other areas. There was their oversight on the idea of AI for the good of humanity, for AI safety, and for the responsible use of AI. And that leads us to this second thing. There are rumors that OpenAI have made some more significant advances beyond what we get with ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And that basically means, and I'm boiling this down to the most simplest kind of kindergarten example, and you know, it's way more complicated than this, but basically a GPT does if, if you say the King of England lives in Buckingham, the GPT will guess you should put palace there. It won't say the King of England lives in Buckingham car or the King of England lives in Buckingham tree. It will say the King of England lives in Buckingham palace. And that is what a GPT does. Now, once you get that down to billions and billions of interconnections inside the neural network, once you get that working on a huge data set, something almost magical happens in that this thing can generate code for computer, for Python, for C. It can generate whole paragraphs. It can generate essays. It can generate all kinds of things 
based on what it thinks should come next. Now, of course, the point is it only works on this idea of a token, which is a part of a word, maybe even a syllable. And as it generates the next set of tokens, it works out what should be the next ones to come. And when you have a big context, not just a sentence, the King of England, but you have a whole paragraph, you've given it the instructions, create this paragraph using artistic, blah, whatever you've typed in as your prompt, and that's why prompt engineering was such a key thing for a while, then it can produce an amazing output. Now, it doesn't understand the concepts of king or person or palace or country or flag or colour or smell or love or any of those things. It's just tokens that it knows the next token to predict. However, the next level beyond this is what we call AGI, that's Artificial General Intelligence, and that's a system that can do learning dynamically and can reason and think a problem through. And the way that the, really the best example of that is mathematical problems, trying to solve a mathematical problem that it hasn't seen before by working out what would be the next best step, not just generating text that just happens to fit what was gone before it. Now the rumor is published by Reuters, there is a project called QSTAR that is happening at uh, OpenAI that has made an advance in this direction towards uh, AGI and that Sam was overseeing this project but wasn't telling the board and the board's responsibility is for safety and for responsible use of AI and when they found out he'd made this step without telling them their reaction was well you've got to go that's that's against the whole principles of this company that you set up with these rail guards these safety guards for what we're going to do and you've got and broken them yourself now if that's true then a couple of interesting things one is is it means that the safety guards that he had set up didn't match what's actually happening. So it failed in that sense. But ignoring that part, the political part, the st corporate structure part, it also means that some advances have been made in technology which will be truly mind-blowing, which will either be amazing or dangerous, depending, of course, on your point of view. Okay, a few other quick things to mention before we go. Meta, that's the Facebook people, have released a new tool called Emu Video, and it's able to produce video clips of four or five seconds based on text. And we're all, of course, nowadays used to these pictures, these images that can get generated by, you know, a cat skateboarding down a high street in New York or something, but this can actually generate a few seconds of video clips. So do check that out. Also, of course, we've got Claude 2.1, the large language model has been released and that's offering huge amounts of context. So you can put in a huge amount of context and then it will generate further along. So also worth checking that out. And the final thing I want to mention is about Grok. That's from XAI, the company from Elon Musk. We know that Grok exists. However, apparently even as soon as next week, Anybody that's got a Twitter Premium Plus, X Premium Plus account, can get access to Grok. Now, I swore blind I would never pay for social media networking, but there I go. I've gone and subscribed to Premium Plus so I can get access to Grok. So do watch out for videos about that over on the Gary Explains channel and, of course, also for articles here on Android Authority. And talking of articles here, if you want even more details on this week's uh, AI Roundup, do follow the link in the description below that will take you to the written article that gets published weekly as well. Okay, that's it. I'll see you next week.